Hello everyone, I'm Dan Philgreen, and this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, June 4th. On today's show, we learn about the many ways the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center in Fort Myers can help you. Paul Yakovich will tell us how recycling is big at Shell Point, even behind the scenes. And we'll visit the card making and scrapbooking group, who are preserving their memories in a beautiful way. But first, we want to remind you about this morning's iPad clinic. Many people buy iPads or receive them as gifts, but have no idea what to do with them. Or perhaps you've tried your iPad, but something just isn't right. Thankfully, there's a place that you can go to get help. All this month, Penny Modrich is hosting a walk-in iPad clinic to help people with iPad problems. It's open this morning and every Wednesday morning from 10.15 to 11.45 a.m. in the Computer Teaching Center in the Island Tunnel. All are welcome. And later today, Shelley Rogerson from Beltone Hearing Aids will be sharing the most important things to consider when purchasing hearing aids. This takes place at 1 p.m. in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. When you think of hearing aids, you may only think of the small devices that go in your ears, but there are other types of hearing aids. For example, a device that amplifies your telephone, or perhaps one that flashes a light when the doorbell rings. These are just a few of the innovations you can learn about at the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center, an organization formed to help those with any degree of hearing difficulty. We're welcoming Executive Director Lori Timpson to talk about the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center next Wednesday, June 11th at 2.15 p.m. in the Social Center. Here's a preview. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I am Leslie Brand. I am the Program Coordinator here at Shell Point. And today I am here representing the Health Connections, two programs that are coming up, one in May and another one in June. And right here with me, I have two lovely ladies that are joining us from the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center. We have Diana Druding, who is the Program Coordinator, and we have Lori Timpson, who is the Executive Director. Now we are very excited to have you both here today and we have a lot to a little discussion of you know the two programs that are going on and we're just going to give you a brief overview of what you are going to be hearing either in May or in June. Now to really focus on one of the programs we are doing is about the telephone equipment loan. Now Diana can you elaborate a little bit on that? We have these two telephones here that will be having at the presentation itself, correct? Yes, that is correct. Good, and I know that you've told me before too that you have many different phones available. We do, we certainly do. Um, This is the FTRI, Florida Telecommunications Relay Inc. program, which is a Florida program for Florida residents. You do have to qualify. You have to be a Florida resident, um, be hearing impaired, deaf, deaf deafblind, or speech impaired. You have to be at least three years of age, and you have to have an active landline to qualify for this program. Uh, The two phones that I brought with me today, they are volume-controlled phones, um, generally for the hard of hearing. Um, They adjust the cordless one up to 45 decibels and the corded one up to 40 decibels. A standard phone is between 15 and 18 decibels. Wow. Gives you an idea how loud yeah, they really are. Definitely. So these are loaned to Florida residents as long as they live in Florida, as long as they need them. And I'm sure a lot of your residents, I know we have a lot of your residents that already have the phones. You are only entitled to one phone uh, through the program. If yours breaks or malfunctions, you can bring it back. We get you a new one. Um, But if they wanted a cordless one that they didn't have before, they can certainly exchange that if something's wrong with their phone. What is the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center? What do you, you know they have to offer? So can you give us a little bit of information on that? I can. Uh, Lori Timpson will be presenting for that presentation. Um, The Deaf Service Center, we are a private, not-for-profit organization. We've been here 30 plus years. Um, We service five areas, five counties, Lee, 
Collier, Charlotte, Hendry, and Glades. So we've been doing this a long time. Um, we have several different programs with the Deaf Service Center. Uh, the phone program is one of our programs. We have information and referrals. We don't ever try to reinvent the, world, the wheel, so um, we will refer people if they need that kind of services. We have outreach presentations that we do, such okay. as we will be doing here. Awesome. We also offer sign language classes. We have baby sign, um, that's to teach uh, hearing babies and parents how to communicate with each other. It's a very cool class. We have family education um, that we provide, adaptive services, uh, equipment, uh, because the phone program, you can only have one phone right. per person. Um, some people want two phones. They can purchase a second phone oh, or right. an alarm clock or a doorbell that they can actually hear or see. Wow. Um, so those we have as well. And interpreting services, such as Lori is doing right now, we also offer that. Um, we, we're, provide, we're funded by grants through Lee County, um, City of Cape Coral, and then various different organizations for the granting. Um, also, uh, membership funds our programs, and the free phone program, ASL classes, that's how we are funded. Wow. Well, it looks like that you have a lot to explain and a lot to tell our residents, too, for these two different programs. And I'm sure that, you know, everyone watching this segment, too, will kind of get, now that we have a little overview of what these topics are going to be about, it's going to be great to actually have you both come here and present for our residents. So there you have it, folks. We have Lori Timpson and Diana Druding here, um, both from the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Center, giving us an overview of the two programs and we hope that you are able to make it and I'm Leslie Brand Program Coordinator and we hope you have a happy and healthy day. On yesterday's show, we told you how easy it is to recycle a large portion of your trash, putting all recyclables in one bin rather than just tossing it in a landfill. Today, we'll go behind the scenes as Paul Yakovich tells us how Shell Point is committed to recycling at every level. Hi everybody, it's Jared Pike with Shell Point TV and today we're talking about recycling. Now with a community the size of Shell Point, there's a lot to be responsible for. Not just caring for residents, but also caring for the facilities. And with this many people, recycling and trash is a big, big deal. And you'd be surprised how much recycling goes on here at Shell Point. And to talk about it is Paul Yakovich. Paul, welcome. Well, thank you very much. I uh, enjoy uh, always speaking to you, and I welcome the opportunity to talk about one of the major operations that we have here at Shell Point, and that is recycling. And it's more than just uh, residents putting things in a bin. Shell Point as a whole, as a, as a community and corporate culture, recycling is big. That's it is huge here. Um, we uh, do more than just recycle things that the residents would use. Uh, it's generally everything that uh, um, that's consumable here at Shell Point is recycled. We're talking about paper, plastic, glass, cardboard, cans, batteries, tires, fluorescent bulbs, electronic components, steel and other mis uh, construction waste, landscape, horticulture, and petroleum-based products. I think I have them all. <laughs> the, uh, we have nearly 50 tons of cardboard that was cycled, for instance, last year uh, at Shell Point. And certainly, uh, we uh, exceed over 300 tons of recyclables that we just pull out of the residential areas every day. Um, we have this uh, responsibility that we take very seriously. For instance, uh, Lee County mandated back in 2007 that all businesses have to mandatorily recycle. At the time we got that mandate from Lee County, we are well ahead of and always pushing for uh, that green label here at Shell Point. So we're very, very, very proud of what we do here. Uh, the, uh, and it's always a, 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 a pleasure and, and sometimes a requirement, I should say, that we uh, talk about recycling at Shell Point because we have a constant flow of new residents in mm. and we always like to update them on what it is that they can and cannot recycle. 
um, the nuances of recycling, such as it's okay to commingle. Mm. Um, we don't recycle styrofoam. Those little facts that the property managers will address and take care of are important facts here. But the one thing I want to get across, we're very excited about our recycling program here. Very active, very effective on the scale that you mentioned earlier on. It's, uh, it's immense uh, the, when you look at the tonnage that we move here every year. And again, it's more than just putting things in a bin. Shell Point goes through consumables, as you say, at a huge rate. Things like petroleum products or tires or uh, office paper, like here in this office. This all gets recycled. It's part of Shell Point's co corporate culture. That's and, exactly right. And you were a part of that. You've been a part of that for many years here at Shell Point. And we appreciate that. Well, I now, appreciate that. <laughs> I've sort of grown with Shell Point as has the recycling program. And it's, uh, again, we, we pride ourselves on being a, a green community. Right. Now, there are some things that people would never think to be recycled, but that you mentioned, for instance, grass clippings mm -hmm. and, and other things like that. Name some of the unique things on that list that people wouldn't think that could be recycled. One of the big questions that we get are batteries. Um, uh, the point we like to make that it's okay to recycle regular alkaline batteries, but those other type batteries, the types that are rechargeable, etc., we provide um, little boxes in the recycling trash rooms for that. Uh, we recycle fluorescent bulbs. Um, people don't realize the impact that the, just tossing away a fluorescent has on the, uh, on the uh, environment. Um, the things that we don't want to see uh, recycled is trash. Um, right. Again, the immense, we uh, physically manhandle every one of those receptacles. And if there's trash in any of those recycling uh, bins, it's very difficult for our techs to stop, separate the two and move on. So they generally will, depending on what's in there, handle that recycling bin as trash if the trash is commingled. So Paul, you have, we have multiple neighborhoods here at Shell Point, Island, Woodlands, Eagles Preserve. We have multiple departments, uh, both landscaping and housekeeping, and you were kind of have your finger on the pulse of all of that. And recycling takes place everywhere at Shell Point, and it's a big deal. I saw the stat that we recycled twice as much as we did five years ago, and uh, it's only going to get bigger as we get more people. That's so, true. so folks, recycling is a priority. You heard it from Paul Yakovich, and you heard it here on Shell Point TV. So, make it your priority as well. I'm Jared Pike. Recycling can even apply to your family photos. No, I don't mean you need to toss out all of your family photos. In fact, by taking them out of the shoebox they're currently in, you can display them in a new and exciting way to make your history come alive for you and your family members. It's called scrapbooking, and there are groups that do it every Wednesday from 9.15 to 2.15 in the Tarpon Room in the Island Tunnel. We learned all about this fun craft. A scrapbook is a uh, combination of your photos and an ornamental way to display them in an acid-free book with acid-free products to save the photos forever. A photo album is what we used to do and now what we're doing is taking those photos so that they don't deteriorate over time and we're doing embellishments. We're adding things, we're creating the story and through the pictures, and some of us are doing journaling and adding the stories so that in future generations, they can not just see the picture, they get the, the big picture. You make your scrapbook for a purpose or for no purpose. I make mine for no purpose. I do a couple pages of whatever I want to do and put them all in one book. Most people pick a subject and they might do a grandchild and give that grandchild the book for their birthday. Uh, they might do their mom, they might do a funeral book for someone who just died and they bring it to the funeral. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Some of us are also combining it with genealogy. I've done books on all the family members, even great-grandchildren now. So it's creating memories, it's sharing, and leaving a life history. This is a book that I had made for my mom and dad for their 50th anniversary. And it was all just pictures in there. So I'm now taking the book apart and I'm making pages that are now 
uh, from the same book. If you want to do inexpensively, you can just get a folder like they have in school. And I made copies of our reunion. This is one that I did on one reunion. And I gave it to everybody. So it was very economical. And then this is another eight and a half by 11 photo. That was for my mom's funeral. And then I'm doing Christmas letters. And I have each year. Debbie has a completely different idea on scrapbooking. It's a lot of embellishments. And these are scrapbook pages she also did. It's not a class, but we are teaching while we're also doing our own projects. And everyone in here is willing to help someone. And she spoke about Mildred. Mildred had never done scrapbooking before. She was here three times. And both the first two times, she was everyone was telling her what to do, but she couldn't start. So she finally started, and now she's doing it at home. And she's amazing. She's teaching now. I had boxes and boxes and boxes of photos. So I thought, how long am I going to save these, and when can I ever look at them? So I decided, when I heard about this, I was going to come and learn. So I brought some pictures, and then I looked at what everybody was doing, but I was scared to do it myself. I thought, oh, I'll mess that up. I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, I started out with this one. This is a, just to see if I could do it. I learned from the girls here, you know, to how to make a page beautiful. And this is like the family tree that I learned from Doris. And so I had fun, and I do have fun, and I do it at home, and I, after I get up in the morning, I see what I have to do. <laughs> I just have fun doing it, and they think it's pretty good I learned after two classes. <laughs> we teach and learn. We're teachers, and we learn, and all these supplies all down there are all donated so everybody can help one another, and so we buddy up. I've learned a lot from them. I didn't know the corner cutter. I was doing it with the scissors all these years, and you can, there it is. She, uh, Joy showed me how to do it. I love it. But do another one. <laughs> yeah, they've been wonderful. She's been a joy to me. <laughs> well, this is a Christmas card I received last year, and I thought it was so adorable. I wanted to copy it and make a centerpiece for my table. So this is Fine Art 101, <laughs> you know. I've never tried anything like this before, but there's so much talent here. I'm getting so much help, but I'm loving it. I'm learning so much. I used to paint and I painted my cards. And then one day, one of my friends that I painted with said, why don't you try card making? And I said, well, that's what I'm doing. And she said, no, she said, come with me. So I went and I got hooked. Cards are very similar to scrapbooking, and you can make it as easy or as hard as you want. Uh, you can do things on the computer, you can just add paper, you can stamp it, you can add an embellishment. You know somebody that you haven't seen in a long time, send them a card. Wish them happy birthday. If you talk to anyone that does scrapbooking or card making, they'll say the same thing, that uh, we get together, we have a lot of fun, and we exchange ideas. So. Uh, like I didn't have enough of some product and somebody over there lent me some foam and somebody else will look at something and say, oh, I can do that. I've got my adhesives in here. I've got scissors that snap. I've got fancy scissors. They make different edges on them. I work with ribbons. I work with um, punches, paper shapers. We shape the paper to what we want them to use. The fun thing about this and the ladies who got this together is of uh, the camaraderie. Everyone's very friendly and um, the ideas you get from other people. And look at the things people have volunteered to give to us to donate. Uh, for instance, this box is full of wonderful things that probably took someone a long time to um, collect and we get the privilege of trying it out and using it ourselves. I never did the scrapbooking or anything when I was young, and now I'm finding all this creativeness coming out in doing the storytelling as well. The first time is the hardest. And then I find the more I do, the more I get into it. I'm addicted to it. And I find that when, like when I leave here, I'll go home. After five hours here, I'll go home just more. <laughs>
It's all different types and we share ideas and I think that's what makes it so much fun. It's better to look at this and I will never drag out all the pictures in the, in the boxes. That's not important. Important is to get it in one place. We would like to invite anyone who might have an interest, come by and see us. You don't have to bring anything if you just want to check us out. And uh, it's Wednesdays, it starts at 9.15. We're here until two. You can bring your lunch, you can go for lunch and come back. You can come and go whenever you want, no cost. And we have a lot of supplies that we share. If you really want to do it, bring some pictures and a pair of scissors, check us out, and then you can buy the items and you can do it cheaply or expensively. If you have any interest whatsoever in any of these things, you are most welcome because we're all willing to help and share. Coming up, we're covering all of today's happenings. Then stay tuned for your Academy News, Menus, and Village Church Connections. Hi everybody and welcome to the Happenings segment of Shell Point TV. My name is Bev Chandley. I'm here with Leslie Brand, and we're going to go over the activities that we offer through Resort Services here today. We're going to start bright and early this morning with the 745 Men's Bible Study. That'll be down in the Osprey Room. And at 845, we have Lily and Company Jewelers coming for their weekly jewelry service. If you have any jewelry repairs that need to be done, go on down there to the Resident Activity Center. At 8.45, the resident council meeting will be in the social center. At 9 o'clock, Jurassi Travel will be in the egret room on the island to help you with your personal travel needs. At 9 o'clock, we also have round robin doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. And the watercolor group will be busy with Phil Hilton at 9 o'clock down in the art studio. At 9.15, the card making and scrapbooking group will be in the tarpon room. 10 o'clock is the time the ladies' Bible study will be in the Osprey room. We'll go to 1015 for the Model Yacht Sailing Club. They'll be at the Woodland Commons Lake. And at 1130, we round out the morning with the Health Connections class, Agility and Flexibility, held in the Health Club, and that's currently full. Here's Leslie for your afternoon lineup. Thank you, Bev. At 1 o'clock, we have chess in the Library Lounge. Also at 1 o'clock, Health Connections, the most important things to consider when purchasing hearing aids will be in the Oak Room of the Woodland, sign up is required. With the Health Connections at 145, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1 and the Health Club, the class is currently full. 2 o'clock, Pottery DVD, Hand Building with artist Mitch Lyons will be in the Pottery Studio on the island. 2.30, Jazz and Stuff will be in the Grand Cypress Room of the Woodlands. 3 o'clock, Bible study in the community room of King's Crown on the island. Also at 3 o'clock, Health Connections, Pilates Stretch in the Health Club. And lastly at 3 o'clock is Memory Care Group, will be in the Behavioral Health of the Medical Center on the island. Sign up is required. 3.30, Health Connections, Aqua Agility and Conditioning in the LifeQuest Aquatic Center on the island. 4.30, Indoor Bocce will be in the Health Club. And lastly for today, 715 Prayer and Praise will be in the Social Center of the Island. Well, thank you for tuning in with us today. We hope you had a fabulous Wednesday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Colath with your Academy information for Wednesday. At 1 o'clock, using the keyboard and the mouse touchpad, we'll continue in the Computer Center at the Woodlands. At 1 o'clock, our Intermediate Bridge Summer Session begins in the Game Room of the Woodlands and sign-up is required. At 1.30, our Colored Pencil Painting Class continues in the Sable Room of the Woodlands. And at 1.45, we start an Internet Prep School in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. Please sign up at either service desk. I'd like to remind everybody who signed up for the Academy on the Go educational field trip, Great Apes, that court pickup will begin at 7 tomorrow morning on the island. Menus for Wednesday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is country-style barbecue pork ribs with ranch beans and cut corn. The dinner special is the pasta buffet for $12.95, and the soup of the day is pasta fagioli. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special is a barbecue beef sandwich with coleslaw for $7.25. The dinner special is fried shrimp for 8 dollars 
Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Wednesday are mussels for $14.95 or walleye for $16.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Randy Woods. And as much as I enjoy the worship services at the Village Church week after week, there are a few times, such as recently when I'm away, that I miss out on the joy, the privilege of sharing together in worship and fellowship. But because of technology and the great blessing that it is, I've been able to stay connected with the Village Church, with our family and friends here, even though I'm miles away. I want to encourage you today, if you're not able to attend the worship services of the church, if you're interested, you can watch the broadcast of the Sunday morning worship service on Shell Point TV, Channel 13. Each Sunday morning at 1030, the morning service is broadcast right in the convenience of your home. Just tune in to Shell Point TV, Channel 13 at 1030, and there you'll see the Sunday morning service. But perhaps you're at the service or somewhere else, and you can't see it on Sunday morning, well, let me encourage you that you can see that service on Tuesday and Thursdays on Shell Point TV, Channel 12. At 8 a.m., 4 p.m., and 8 p.m., the previous Sunday morning worship service is broadcast on Shell Point TV, Channel 12. So again, at the convenience of your own home, you can watch it there. But if you're like me, you're not so patient, and you want to see it and hear it now. So at any time, day or night, you can go to your computer and just click on www.villagechurchmedia.com. And there you can watch the whole Sunday morning service and even click and forward and slow down and repeat and watch the service right on your own computer. Each Sunday morning service is not only posted there, but there's a library of previous weeks. So at your convenience, you can go back and hear something again or see it. And then on the same page, you'll notice the icons for the Sunday evening service. As we've been doing the video series on church history, there you'll find the audio files that record the dialogue that Pastor Andy has had as it relates to the teaching on church history. So whether it's through Shell Point TV or villagechurchmedia.com, I trust that you'll stay connected, whether you're traveling or have opportunity just to want to see the service again. I trust that these resources will be a great encouragement to you, and you'll take advantage of the opportunity to stay connected with the Village Church Ministries. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as Finemark Bank teaches us the difference between a joint owner and an authorized signer. We'll also hit the road with Frank Main and his unique roadster, the Cadillac XLR. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Wednesday, June 4th. I'm Dan Philgreen, and from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.